I'm Carl Pride, and this is Brockton. You know, in Brockton, we celebrate every ethnicity and culture. And this week, the city of Brockton had the Italian flag raising ceremony at City Hall. When we look at the history of Brockton, when we look at this building right here, City Hall, this was built by Italian immigrants, craftsmen that came here, working in the shoe factories, working to build our streets and our bridges and our infrastructure, educating our kids, providing medicine, and business, I mean, the whole gamut. And if you look at the history of Brockton, the Italian immigrants that came to the City of Champions made it the City of Champions through their efforts and their dedication and building a better community. And I am really proud today to say that I am joined by many members of Christopher Columbus Lodge 216, which is the Order of the Daughters and Sons of Italy. Uh, I want to recognize Todd Petty, who I served many years on the City Council. He is the president of the, uh, of the Lodge, and he will be saying a few words in a few moments. But I also just want to let you know that um, next week is a historic day. If you're a boxing fan or just a Brocktonian, the Brockton Blockbuster, undefeated, undisputed heavyweight champ, Rocky Marciano, October 26, 1951, fought Joe Lewis, the Brown Bomber. Historic A-round fight and Rock knocked him out. To next week, next Tuesday, up at West Middle School, those that are old enough call West Junior High. In the theater, we are gonna show the entire fight of Marciano Lewis. Marciano family members that live in Massachusetts are gonna be joining us. I encourage any of you and all of you, please come up, enjoy an evening to remember Rocky. We're gonna have some refreshments as well. So again, it's on social media and please pass the word on. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry, 6 p.m., 6 p.m. I wanna take a moment also because nothing can be accomplished without a good team. I have a wonderful team in my office. Uh, Sydney Marrow is my chief of staff. John Messia, director of constituent service, community outreach. Davidson Prez from PR and Jensen Denoyce from communication. We're all in this together. And, and when Jackie last year had reached out to us and, and said, you know, why can't we do it? We couldn't do a lot of things last year because of COVID out of, out of abundance of caution. But this year, we're not just gonna do a historic flag raising. We have an assortment of cannolis for Antilio's Bakery. So we're gonna have a great day and then eat some great desserts and have some wonderful coffee. At this time, I would like to invite my friend and just a great Brocktonian in his own right and his family, Mr. Todd Petty, please come to the podium, counselor. Mr. President, Mr. Mayor, good to Mr. See you, Mayor, thank you. It's great to see you, see you as well. See you, Todd. Thank you for the kind introduction. I would like to, uh, of course, Mr. President's going to say some words, but one of my honors is to give proclamations, official mayoral proclamations. And today I'm going to present it to Todd in his capacity for the Lodge 216 proclamation. Whereas the United States Congre Congress designated the month of October in 1989 as Italian American Heritage and Culture Month to recognize all Italian Americans. Whereas Italian American immigrants' talents, dedication, and work in the city shoe factories deemed Brockton the shoe city in the early 1900s. Whereas the athletic prowess and boxing career of the undisputed and undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Rocky Marciano, contributed to Brockton's moniker of City of Champions. Whereas the historical links between Italy and the United States have been strengthened by the presence of Brockton's Italian residents, elected officials, officials, and business owners. Whereas the contribution of Italian immigrants and their descendants in the professional areas of education, law, medicine, athletics, science, culinary, arts, business, and industry have transformed and greatly enriched, enriched our nation, our commonwealth, and our city. Therefore, I, Robert F. Sullivan, as the mayor of the city of Brockton, hereby proclaim October 20th and the entire month of October in the city of Brockton as Italian American Heritage Month. And I urge all great residents of the city of Brockton to join me in observing this day in this month. I proudly sign it today, to the day, the 20th day of October, 2021. And I present this to you, Mr. President. Thank you very much, Mayor Sullivan. I really appreciate it. On behalf of the Lodge, we thank you and your staff very, very much. Thank you, Tom. Sure. Just for the Enterprise? Mark the Enterprise? Oh, I thought you wanted to take it. Oh, I need to take it. Mm -hmm. I want to say it. Yeah, I need to take it. 
Thank you. Jackie, Monterigo. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Julia. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mayor Sullivan, thank you very much for that uh, kind proclamation. The uh, Lodge thanks you very, very much. And thank you. thanks to everyone here for being here today. Uh, October is a uh, very proud month for all Italian Americans, and I'm, we are glad that uh, we can share it with you here. Uh, I, I want to be the first um, to thank uh, a, a city councilor in the audience uh, today from Ward 3, Dennis Ionieri, an Italian American. <laughs> Dennis is completing his final term as a city councilor in Brockton, which is part of a 42 year continuous of uh, service in the city of Brockton on the school committee and the city council. Oh, Dennis, thank you very, very much. You're very, very welcome, Dennis. Uh, Dennis, I'd like to ask you to come up here for one second, if you don't mind. Dennis, I want you to stand here and make sure that does not fall off. Oh, just make sure it doesn't fall. Okay. Uh, as the mayor um, mentioned in his proclamation, um, there are members of the Christopher Columbus Lodge, aka the Cristoforo Combo Lodge number 216, which received its charter on December 26, 2013. And that original charter, written in Italian, is right over there with the mayor and with Councilor Ionieri for everyone to see. As long as we don't have to read it. <laughs> yeah. So Dennis, Throughout the presentation, just make sure that does not fall. Everything is original from the glass, every, everything. Including you. <laughs> I just got a couple of things I'd like to say. As the mayor had mentioned, uh, uh, the president and Congress uh, enacted a proclamation um, indicating that October would be Italian Heritage Cultural Month um, in, in America. And it recognizes the achievements, as the mayor mentioned, of everything that from arts to medicine and uh, in, in, in stone carving, and which I'll get to in a moment. Um, Mount Rushmore. How did I get to Mount Rushmore, Mr. Mayor? Saying, how did I get to Mount Rushmore? Mount Rushmore National Park was opened on October 31st, 1941. And what was given to the public then was this sculpting of four large faces of presidents. President Washington, President Theodore Roosevelt, President Thomas Jefferson, and Abraham Lincoln. 60 foot in height faces were on Mount Rushmore. Luigi Del Bianco was an Italian American who was born in France. So I don't know how that one happened, but he was born in La Havre, France. The project for Mount Rushmore started in 1927. In 1933, it had eight more years of work to go before its completion. And Luigi Del Bianco was asked to be the chief stone carver of the project and oversee a group of 400 men while they finished the project. The project was completed in 1941. The park opened up in October of 41. Luigi De Bianco passed away in 1969, having completed and got to see one of the greatest jobs ever constructed in terms of statues in America. Now, a little closer to home, Mayor Sullivan, Councilor Ionieri, everyone, behind me and in front of you are the viaducts, which the trains drive on every day from Montello to Camp Pello. In, in the 1880s, towards the end of the 19th century, the, the Brockton train system was preparing to improve, it, to improve the train system from Boston to Brockton. And a viaduct system was, was designed. When it was completed, the most important thing was accomplished. The trains could run, people could walk, Horses and carriages and whatever there was back then for cars could move simultaneously because in the city of Brockton, the train tracks and the streets do not intersect, which is the only place in the United States of America where that is possible. 
So it was an engineering marvel that that was, that was done. So the Italians, when they heard that this project was going to happen, contacted all their stonemasonry friends in Italy, and they came to Brockton. In Italy, they're making a dollar a day. They came here and they're making five dollars a day. It was a tremendous project, and the Italian masons were, were primary in getting it done. I will say, benvenito tutti, that means welcome everyone. I will say ciao, that means goodbye. Ms. Mayor, thank you very, very much for this wonderful day. Councilor Ianieri, thank you for watching over that charter. And again, thank you very much. Thanks. 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 So Todd is a, a proud graduate of Brockton High, and my dad was his teacher, history teacher. I'm going to tell my father he did a pretty good job, because Todd just taught us a lot of history, didn't he? So at this time, I'm going to encourage anybody and everybody, and I'm going to have the president of the lodge, I'm going to have the, the dean of the, the council and all the elected officials, and anybody and everybody, let's go over and hoist the wonderful Italian flag at this time. Uh, this concludes the ceremony, but we have cannolis, uh, we have chocolate chip and plain, we have coffee. I want to thank uh, Joseph Francois in my office for getting the coffee. So, again, Brian Matta and Anthony, uh, everybody outside. So enjoy and ciao. I mean, for me in the city of Brockton, to recognize the Italian-American community for the great work that they've done, not only in the city of Brockton, but not only in the Commonwealth, but also for the nation. And we should recognize them for everything, whether it's business, culture, or, or other sports. For instance, um, Rocky Marciano. He's a legend. He's also an Italian descendant. Elsa has been busy this week following Spanish Heritage Month and filed the, this report from the George School. salsa down, uh, some cha-cha-cha and uh, rumba, and what else? Anything else that uh, we can do tonight to uh, celebrate that great uh, cultural mo uh, moment, we'll do. And then we do something on the side. Keep it simple, you bounce, back, one day together, you do a little bouncing. Forward again, forward now. Yes. 
Both of us, side, side, forward. Next turn, right turn. Quick side. Side and back. And side, side, forward. Side, side, back. And side, side, forward. Let's go cross over again. On the arm turn. Quick, slow, and back, step, side, and left, step forward. Woo! Cha cha! There we go. Two, three, cha cha cha. Back, step, cha cha cha. Forward, cha cha cha. Back, step, cha cha cha. Forward, cha cha cha. Cross over, cha cha cha. Cha cha cha. On the arm turn. Two, three, cha cha cha. There we go. Cha cha cha. Oh, so freedom. Back step. Let's go. Cha cha cha. Put in the back. Cha cha cha. Back. Cha cha cha. Back step. Cha cha cha. Back step. Cha cha cha. Let's go forward. Let's go now. One more. One. As you've seen guys, that's how it was for us, having fun, because we know all the stress and tragedy that we're going through whenever you have a moment, Parents Academy offers you that, and hopefully next time you'll be there. But before I go, I couldn't make this happen without the support of amazing um, um, co-workers, really, those who have been working day and night for you. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce again my friend, my supporter, Morton Pierre Antoine, he's going to tell you what he does. You know, I know you speak a lot, right? He's going to say it in 30 seconds. <laughs> All right, I don't want to bore you, but I just, I'm just going to repeat what I said earlier. I work for Boston Public Schools. I am actually at uh, uh, BHS, Boston High School, where I teach uh, foreign languages. And it is, again, my biggest pleasure tonight to be here with you to celebrate that big cultural event, celebrating Hispanic the Hispanic Heritage. Month, Hispanic Heritage. So it was a real pleasure for me to do some salsa, some cha-cha with all my friends over here. Until next time. Awesome. Thank you so much. As I told you, there's more, there's more. Come on. Adele, she's the parent advocate. You know parents, how many times you call her. But you know what? She's going to not only say it in English, but she speaks also Portuguese or Cuban Creole. Hola. My name is Adele. I'm the family advocate from Broughton Public School. Oh, and you know me, Adele, me, I'm public the Broughton Public School. Street. <laughs> Last but not least, <laughs> here he is, an amazing friend, a support, if you're looking for counseling, whatever it is, but right now he's in Brockton doing his thing, and he speaks your language too. Hello everyone, thank you for having me. Uh, my name is Paolo Late. I'm a school adjustment counselor for the Brockton Public School System uh, for re-engagement and uh, community outreach, and it's great to be here today to support you, uh, the work that you're doing. Um, and I'll say it in Creole also. Si. Meu nome é Paulo Leite, me é um conselheiro de na escola, School Adjustment Counselor. E eu trabalho para trabalhar com gente que alunos às vezes que caçam também para a escola. Uh, então é re-engagement, você tenta trazer-se de volta. Uh, e também para, para ent entrar na comunidade, para trabalhar com a comunidade. Então telefone. se nós precisamos de alguma coisa, nós precisamos de saber. É Paulo Leite. Obrigado. E com o meu telefone. Where are you? All right, if you need me, call the Kids Center, call the Parent Information Center. You have the number 508-580-7950 or my number 774-517-7081. Again, thank you. I honor you. I honor your heritage, and we are here to support you. This is the Brockton Public School Parents Academy.
We are here for you to serve. That is our goal. This is Brockton is brought to you by the BCA staff and volunteers. If you'd like to be a contributing story producer, give us a call 508-580-2228 or on the web at bcatv.org. I'm Mike Simmons. I'm the programming genius here at Rockin' Community Access. Today, we're talking about membership. Let's kick it over to Cassie Bruni, our outreach genius. Take it away, Cassie. Hi, and welcome to Brockton Community Access, your local community access station. Our mission is to empower diversity and freedom of expression by connecting our community with knowledge and media resources, driven by our passion and commitment to serve. We are your voice to our community, and it is so easy to become a member. How do you do that? You can just come in and sign up with one of our applications here, or you can go online and sign up to be a member. Can't wait to see you here. You know, at BCA, we're so excited to be working with the Red Cross uh, to have a blood drive on November 8th at our studio, uh, located at One North Main. I was able to talk with Barbara Cotton from the Red Cross and this is what she had to say. So blood is deemed essential and it's a really good thing that it is. Um, and I think as you know, blood right now is at an emergency um, low, more so than it has been in the last six years, uh, largely in part because of the pandemic. Um, in fact, there are only um, 3% of the entire nation's population that actually donates blood. Um, but the Red Cross supplies 40% of the nation's blood supply. So you can kind of see where that's, that's a difficulty. Um, traditionally, we're able to collect at schools and universities and engage young people around donations. And that's been really difficult during the pandemic. So that's caused a national shortage for us. Um, likewise, COVID has also um, caused a shortage. But to answer your question in terms of why it's essential, it's because it's needed uh, and it's necessary for not just trauma patients, and Elsa and I had talked a little bit about that, but also for those who need it for therapies and treatments. So it could be needed for um, in a maternity ward for a mom who's uh, giving birth. It could be needed in a trauma center for um, a, a large car accident, uh, and, and a large number of people are brought in at, at a particular time. Uh, dialysis, chemotherapy, um, breast cancer treatments, um, as well as blood transfusions for those who suffer from sickle cell. Speaking of sickle cell, what, what what is the Red Cross doing for sickle cell in Brockton? Oh, my goodness. Well, and, and thank you so much, Carl, because you are going to actually be a host site for us um, for one of those days as well. Um, so sickle cell is something that a lot of people are not aware of if they're not afflicted with it. But 100,000 Americans suffer with sickle cell. And what that is, is it's a hardening of the cell that forms a C and it becomes, when it's hardened, really painful and can block blood vessels. And so there is no cure for that. Um, and what the Red Cross is able to do is provide blood um, treatments. And so those transfusions, which have to happen quite frequently, um, offer some reprieve but those are regular ongoing therapies. And so um, the majority of those who are afflicted with sickle cell are African-American and the best donor match really for anyone who has sickle cell is going to be someone who is of the same race or a similar ethnicity. ethnicity. Thank you. It's usually a myth. I don't know if it's hundred percent true, but can you donate blood even though you have tattoos? Yeah, absolutely. You can. Um, I know that there might be a little bit of a waiting period. We would ask people when, when they last had theirs done. Um, but yes, they are absolutely able to and eligible to donate. Okay. Because mine's been longer than a year. So you think, oh, good? then you definitely can qualify. <laughs> what are the restrictions then? 
Um, there are a lot of restrictions, uh, more than I could enumerate. Um, one of the best things to do, especially where you're a new donor or for anybody who's listening who might be a new donor as well, um, redcrossblood.org has a lot of kind of F uh, you know, frequently asked questions, the FAQs, uh, where you can kind of go through and see what might determine um, your eligibility. Um, sometimes there are medications that people are on that they think might exempt them from taking um, or giving blood, but in fact, they can manage it and, and take it in a way that allows for them to still donate. So um, without getting into all the nuances with the whole health history, um, the best thing to do is to go to redcrossblood.org and check out the frequently asked questions and kind of just go through and, and answer those questions on your own um, to determine your eligibility. How long is the process when you're laying there taking blood out? Um, we recommend when somebody is donating blood to expect an hour from the time that they come in to the time that they leave. It doesn't take that long. Um, more, more seasoned donors who are well hydrated um, are able to do that in significantly less time. But the actual blood donation process takes about eight to 10 minutes. So in Brockton, like you said, we're at an emergency low. How, how often are you doing blood drives? So we try to do blood drives as frequently as possible as the area supports. So we know that for those who donate to the Red Cross, we always welcome first time donors. We're hoping that they turn into regular donors um, and we do have regular donors. So someone donating whole blood and that's just a regular donation is able to do that every 56 days. So ideally um, the goal would be to have one almost maybe every other, every two to three weeks and pop those up um, monthly again, seeking separate donors, but that the goal would be that that donor who comes in, let's say today, is able to come again in December uh, and schedule that appointment. So we always want to kind of make sure that we've offered enough drives to invite people to participate as well as continue to donate throughout the year. The blood that that's collected in Brockton, does that stay in Brockton or does it go, where, where does it go? The beauty of it is it goes everywhere or anywhere that it's needed. And because blood is essential, and right now it is at a critical shortage, um, the Red Cross has the ability to get that blood where it's needed most. So um, when there's not a shortage, blood tends to stay much more local. And when there is a shortage, I'm going to, to speculate that it goes further. And I can say that because the difference between my donation last year going to the Brockton VA hospital um, is different than mine having gone to greater New York this past month. And I did mm. get an alert on that. So that's another really cool thing when you're making your blood donation appointment. You can certainly do that online at redcrossblood.org, but you also can do that on a donor app. And so if you download that donor app and make your appointment, you're actually also able to track where that blood goes. You know, we talk about the season of giving, we talk about Thanksgiving, things that we're thankful and grateful for. Um, when you have your health, you have a whole lot of wealth, right? And this is something that doesn't cost any money, but makes a tremendous impact. And for anyone who has either needed blood or knows someone who needs it, um, you know that the comfort and care that that gift brings um, can have on that person. And so to imagine that your donation can help up to three people, three people that you've never met, um, that's huge. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Elsa. From all of us at BCA, I'm Carl Pride. Have a great week.